Today we're going to take a look at continuing our work with finding volumes of revolutions, this time using a method called cylindrical shells. We're going to answer the question, what is another way to find the volume of a solid of revolution. We've already used the method of disks and washers. We're looking at another way, and that's using these things called cylindrical shells. So again, we're going to start with the idea behind what we're going to do, and then we'll work into some practice. These things called cylindrical shells. Let's say I've got some function from A to B. And we're going to revolve it around the y-axis. So it's kind of got this hole in the middle. Rotate it around as best as you can imagine my 3D drawing. What I want to notice, though, is if I cut one of these rotations around, if I took just a small rectangle, we'll give it a width of delta x or dx, better said dx. And when that piece rotates around, we end up with this little cylinder. Let's pull it out. We end up with this little cylinder. Where the height of that cylinder, it goes up to the function, the curve. So the height is actually f of x. The radius of that cylinder going all the way to the outside is just whatever that x distance is that generates that f of x result. So the radius is x. And it has a width of delta x. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to slice it down the side and open it up. And when we slice it and open it up, lay it out flat like you're tearing off the label of a soup can and laying it flat, you get this rectangle where the height of the rectangle is still f of x. The length of the rectangle is the same as the circumference of the circle. And the formula for the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times its radius. And the radius in our case was just x. And we know that this guy has a width of delta x, or dx. So if I wanted to find the volume of one of these rectangular prisms, we would take the length times the width times the height, multiply the three dimensions together. We would have 2 pi x times the f of x times the height of d of x. And now what I want to see is if I started from my a with that first cylinder, and I stretch across until I get to b with my last cylinder, I'll end up with all of the little tiny cylinders the tiny cylindrical shells all the way from A to B. And if I want to add them all together, we're really taking the integral from A to B of 2 pi x, that's the length, times f of x, the height, times the d of x. Well, the 2 pi is a constant, so that can come out. And what we end up with is a volume formula for our cylindrical shells of 2 pi times the integral from a to b of x times f of x dx. And that is going to be the formula we'll use to help us find 
our volume of our three-dimensional solid of rotation by cutting into little cylinders that go all the way across. I want to note something also what we did that this example, I rotated around the y-axis, but we integrated with respect to x. When we did disks, everything went the same way. With disks, if you rotated around the y, you were probably doing disk and in integrating with respect to y. But with shells, it's always the opposites. We always integrate in the opposite direction of the revolution. It's an important difference between the two methods. OK, let's try some examples with some numbers to help us get our mind around exactly what we're doing. Let's say we take a shape that is bounded by f of x equals x squared above. So that's the top of the shape. And the x-axis below on the interval from 1 to 2. And we want the volume when rotated around the y-axis. So drawing a picture to get an idea of what we're working with, we've got the shape x squared. But we only want to consider it between 1 and 2 as it drops down to the x-axis. And then we're going to rotate that around the y-axis. So let's see if I can draw my shape as it rotates around. So it's kind of got this hole carved out of the center that goes all the way down to the bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to put shells in the middle of it, cylindrical shells, where the volume is equal to the 2 pi times the integral. We're going from 1 to 2. 1 to 2 is where those edges go from, times x. That's our length, times the height, which is just our function, x squared dx. Well, we can simplify that to get 2 pi times the integral from 1 to 2 of x cubed dx. And we can integrate this really quick and find our area. 2 pi times x to the fourth divided by 4 integrated from 1 to 2 is 2 pi times. 2 to the fourth is 16, divided by 4 is 4, minus the 1 fourth, which is 15 fourths, times 2 pi, which is 15 pi over 2 cubic units in the volume of our shape. What you might find is when we're using cylindrical shells, conceptually, it's a little trickier to get our mind around where they start, where they end, and how they're formed. But the integration step quite often is much easier with cylindrical shells than it was with disks and washers. Let's try another example. Let's look at the shape that is bounded above. by f of x equals 3x minus x squared, and below by the x-axis on 0 to 2. And we're going to find the volume when we rotate around the y-axis.
Now, I'd suggest using either your calculator or Desmos to see what 3x minus x squared looks like. It gives us this nice little parabola. But we're only going from 0 to 2. So we're going to stop our rotation right there. Let's see if I can draw our same shape. And we'll rotate around the y-axis to get what's almost a perfect cylinder, but it's got this little curve coming in, and then the inside is cut out of it. And we're going to cut cylindrical shells on it. to find our volume. Volume is 2 pi times our integral. We're integrating from 0 to 2. The radius is just our x distance. The height is the function, 3x minus x squared dx. Distributing that x through, we'll have 3x squared minus x cubed dx. And our integrating from 0 to 2, oops, when we integrate, we'll have x cubed divided by 3, clears the 3, minus x to the fourth divided by 4, integrated from 0 to 2. Plugging in those values, we have 2 pi times 2 cubed is 8. Minus 2 to the fourth is 16. Divided by 4 is 4. Plugging 0 end is just subtracting 0. 8 minus 4 is 4 times 2 is 8 pi for our volume, 8 pi cubic units. Let's try one where we revolve around the other axis. Let's bound on the right. By g of y equals 3 over y. And on the left, by the y axis. for y is going to go from 1 to 3. So that's our y is going from 1 to 3. It's not our x's like normal. And we want the volume rotated around the x-axis this time. Three over y curves down, something like this. We want to go from where y is 1 to where y is 3. y is going from 1 to 3. And that's the shape that we want to rotate around. So it's got a hole straight down the middle. And it's got this weird cone shape on top and a full cylinder on the bottom. And we're going to be drawing cylindrical shells in there. But this time, the edge of the cylindrical shell is going between 1 and 3 on the y-axis, because we always integrate with respect to the opposite variable. So we rotate around the x. We're going to integrate with respect to y. Our volume is 2 pi times the integral as y's go from 1 to 3. This time, the radius of our cylinder is just the height, or just the y. The distance, though, the height of our cylinder, that length, is our function in terms of y, which we already have, is 3 over y dy. And that's nice, because those y's will divide out. So we really just have 2 pi times the integral from 1 to 3 of 3 dy. 
which is a real nice integral for us to take. 2 pi times 3y integrated from 1 to 3. Or 2 pi times 3 times 3 is 9. Minus 3 times 1 is 3. 6 times 2 is 12 pi for our volume when we rotate it around the x-axis. Let's try another example. This time, we're going to increase our complexity. This time, we're going to revolve around another line. When we revolve around another line, what that's going to do is it's going to move our circles. It's going to adjust the radius. So we're going to have to look at our radius of our circle, which is normally just x or just y, and maybe add or subtract something or take a number minus or plus that x. So let's take a look at this example. Let's look at the shape that's bounded above by f of x equals x squared and below by the x-axis on the interval from 0 to 1. We're going to find the volume when we rotate around, this time, the line x equals negative 2. Not the x-axis, but x equals negative 2. How is that going to change things? So going from 0 to 1, x squared looks like this, from 0 to 1. But here is x equals negative 2 over here. So when we revolve around that, x equals negative 2. Let's label that. When we revolve around that, we end up with this bigger shape. So now when we cut our shells, they're going to rotate around a different point. And the thing that changes is the radius. Normally, the radius is just our x, because it's our distance from the x-axis to our point. That's normally just x. But what we notice here is there's an extra distance of two units. So our new radius has to be 2 plus x. So it adjusts our formula slightly. We still have 2 pi times the integral. We're still going from 0 to 1. But our radius is no longer just x. Now it's 2 plus x times our function, the height of our cylinder. The height is still the function x squared dx. And now that we've set up our integral, now we're ready to solve it. Go ahead and distribute that x squared through. Gives us 2x squared plus x cubed dx. Integrating gives us 2x cubed divided by 3 plus x to the fourth divided by 4 integrated from 0 to 1. It's always nice when we have 0 because we're subtracting nothing. So we have 2 pi times, plugging 1 in, 2 thirds plus 1 fourth. When we plug the 0 in, we're just subtracting 0. And this gives us 8 plus 3 is 11 twelfths times 2 pi is going to give us 11 pi over 6 for our volume when we rotate around x equals negative 2. So one thing we have to be careful of is if we revolve around another line, we have to adjust the radius by help. It's helpful to draw the picture. We might have to add a number. We might have to subtract a number. We might have to subtract x from a number. 
So draw a picture to see how we have to adjust that radius to get our new integration. But the radius isn't the only thing that might have to adjust. What if we are in between functions? The cylinder doesn't go all the way down to the x-axis or all the way down to the y-axis. If we're between functions, we need to adjust the height by subtracting the functions. So let's take a look at a shape that's bounded above. by f of x equals x, and below by g of x equals x squared on 0 to 1. And we're going to revolve around the y-axis. We'll zoom way in so I can see 1 bounded above by y equals f of x, or y equals x, sorry, bounded below by x squared. And it's going to rotate around the y-axis. So I can make that a little brighter. Now what you'll see is when we draw our cylindrical shells, they no longer drop all the way down to the y-axis or to the x-axis. The height has been cut off. So for our volume, our radius 2 pi times the integral, we're still going from 0 to 1 on the x's. The radius is still x, because we, did it, we revolved around 0. But for our height of the function, the height of the function is now the difference between the two curves. Just like when we were finding the area between two curves, we subtracted them. So we'll take our x and subtract the x squared dx. A little distributing to make the integration easier. We'll have x squared minus x cubed dx. And from here, it should solve quite nicely. 2 pi times x cubed divided by 3 minus x to the fourth divided by 4. Integrating from 0 to 1. 2 pi times, when we plug 1 in, we get 1 third minus 1 fourth. Plug 0 in, we're subtracting 0. And that gives us 1 12th times 2 pi, or pi over 6, for our final volume, pi over 6 cubic units. So we have to be careful when we're between functions, we have to adjust the height. So when we revolve around another line, we adjust the radius, the x. When we're between functions, we adjust the height, the f of x. Let's wrap up by doing one example that combines both of those into one great problem. Let's look at the shape that is bounded by f of x equals the square root of 2x above, below, by f of x equals, or g of x, we need a different letter, g of x equals 2x. And we're going to do this over the range, let's put it over here, over 0 to 1 half. And we're going to find the volume when rotated around 
y equals negative 1. So the square root of 2x, grab blue, looks something like this. 2x looks something like that. So we've got 2x on the bottom, square root of 2x on the top. y equals negative 1, though, is what we're going to rotate around. So we end up with this big bowl-looking shape with a hole down the center. If I were to draw my cylinder in here, the top of my cylinder is going to touch the 2x function. But the bottom of my cylinder is touching the square root of 2x function. We're also rotating along the line y equals negative 1 instead of the y equals 0 or the x-axis. So it's going to change both the radius and the height. We have 2 pi times our integral. I want to be careful here. We're integrating as x goes from 0 to 1 half. What are those y coordinates? Well, fortunately, they both intersect here. So when we'll put in a g of x. g of 0 is equal to 2 times 0, or 0. So y starts at 0. g of 1 half is equal to 2 times 1 half, which is equal to 1. So that height is 1. So we're really integrating from 0 to 1. as so those y's climb up from 0 to 1. Our radius goes from negative 1 up to my height of y. So we've got a height of y, but then we've got this extra distance. That's got a measurement of 1. So the radius is actually y plus 1. For our height, it's the space between the two functions. But our functions are in terms of x. We need them to be in terms of y. So let's solve them really quick y equals the square root of 2x, so y squared equals 2x. So y squared divided by 2 equals x. That's the bottom function, the curved one. The other function, 2x equals y. x is equal to y over 2. That's the top function, the straight function. So we multiply by our top function, the y over 2 minus the bottom function, y squared over 2 dy. And that's how we can set up our formula to integrate. From here, it's just basic calculus. From here, I might try and make this easier to solve, noticing that if I take this 2 and distribute it into the second factor, we can distribute it into either spot. But the advantage of the second factor is it clears out those divide by 2's. So we have the pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of y plus 1 times y minus y squared dy. A little bit of FOIL. y times y is y squared minus y cubed plus y minus y squared dy. Combine like terms. The y squareds are gone, and we have y minus y cubed dy. That integrates quite nicely. Pi times y squared over 2 minus y to the fourth divided by 4, integrating from 0 to 1. Pi times, plugging in the 1, we have 1 half minus 1 fourth. Oh, we've already integrated. And that's going to give us pi over 4 for the volume of that shape when it's rotated over y equals negative 1. 
So finding volumes by cylindrical shells, the general idea is we take 2 pi times the integral of x times f of x dx, where x represents the radius, and f of x represents the height, knowing we might need to adjust the radius if we rotate around a different point. We might have to adjust the function if we're doing the difference between two functions. But this general process is how we're going to find volumes by cylindrical shells. So take a look at the homework assignment, practice several of these, and we'll discuss them more in class. We will see you then.